So we're going to continue on removing wires here in advance of removing the, the, um, the intake manifold. So we're going to have to pull all the injector connectors. See how that goes. You just so you just press that with your thumb there. You just press that and it comes off. None of this stuff is easy, so don't think it's a cakewalk or anything like that. So then you take that bolt out, and then you're gonna be able to get to that last injector there. You're gonna to have to disconnect this. And then once again, there's a little tab behind there, which you can't do with two, you know, with one hand. And then these are gonna come off. So there's a little tab there, pull that tab. Try not to destroy the wires, because you're going to use them again. If you yank the wires out of these connectors, you're going to just have to put them back together. So it's just making more work for you. The car won't, won't run with the wires all effed up. So be careful, okay? Okay, so the uh, dipstick tube, that's going to have to come off, it's like a 12 mil. So there's a little clip under here for the wire, so you got to pull that clip off. When you pull this wiring harness, there's a little clip back here that holds it to a post on the valve cover. So you. You pull on that clip, and this whole thing comes loose, okay? Also, all these little posts have, have a little clip on them. You just pull that clip back, see that? And then it'll come off the post, see? It's easy. We're at it again. There's a clip holding this wire on the intake manifold, so that clip's got to come off. It's kind of a bear to get to, so I got my, my bent needle nose. There we go. Got it off. Sweet. I knew eventually we would come to this. To get to the rest of the, to remove the wires, we're going to have to take the cover off the bottom. So we might not be able to do the intake manifold until we get the cover off the bottom. Well, it sounds weird, but it's true. Unless I can reach down and disconnect all this stuff. Oh, there's another clip. Another clip under there. Let's say no. Uh. Well, anyway, we gave it a shot. So, like I said, this this all has to move in order to get the intake off. That might be moved enough. I got another, got another freaking, ah, oh, the uh, map sensor. Got to disconnect that. You may have seen my video on the connections to make when you're all done. That pretty much explains all the crap that you have to take apart, but it's in reverse. So, you know, what? I'd recommend if you, if you want to see where everything came from, you should probably go see the video on putting stuff back in. It's it's way easier showing you where all the, the wires go when the car is empty, you know, when there's no when there's nothing in the way. So there's another one of those clips. Man. 
Toyota went haywire on these clips. There's, I mean, there's a clip and then two inches later, another clip. Well, I gotta figure out a way to get that out. Screwdrivers are for driving screws. They're not. They're not meant for popping clips. But you know what? When the shoe fits, there we go. Got it. Got it with a screwdriver. Thanks, Toyota. This is for all you Obama fans out there. Thanks, Toyota. All right, so just so you, you know, this is your EGR back here, and we're going to have to undo the two bolts on the flange for the EGR pipe. That goes to the intake manifold because we're taking the pipe with the intake manifold because it's easier that way. You know, I'm lazy. All right, so that's how it's going to be. Get your 10 mil. Probably gonna need a wobble or an extension or something. So we'll get the top one's easy. Pop that loose. And then the bottom one. The bottom one, we'll just put an extension on here. Okay, get the extension on there. Slip it under there where it ought to be. <coughs> Then we pop that loose. Looks like we're going to be able to use the, uh, the impact for us. So we slip that under there. And then you know what you do? You take the bolts and you put them in a drawer that says intake man. Or you could do EGR for that one, it's fine. But uh, we're going to do intake manifold. And uh, we'll, we'll do EGR too. EGR pipe. Alright, so that goes in there. I put the drawers in the front seat, because why not? And then the manifold itself is going to be a 12 mil. Put the 12 on the ratchet. I'm going to use pretty much a, a deep well for everything, because sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. Said before these these bolts are always super tight, ah. but it's not because they were torqued on tight. It's because they got tight. And then down here is a map map sensor. You have to disconnect it. But don't break it. Like I said, don't break it. It's expensive. Now we're going to zip these off here. You know where the bolts go. Dropped a little clip that holds that on there. Oh well. Oh well. Collect it on the other side, I think. Then we pick up our nuts. Bolts. Just drop, you know what? Just drop the freaking. Just drop it in there. Who cares? All right. Now there's going to be some uh, some hoses connected. That's where we are now. Let me show you the hoses. Okay, just so you get a better view here, 
So this thing came off of here, and then see you got this jumble of hoses over here. I don't know if you can see all that. Okay, it's not what it looks like. There's three hoses, okay? You got the PCV right here, positive crankcase ventilation. That goes to the throttle body, but we'll talk about that later. And then this hose is a coolant hose. That goes to the throttle body. And then this hose is a coolant hose. That comes back from the throttle body, or vice versa. You know, we'll, we'll check up on that later. And this is your EGR pipe. It's not a big deal because that's free already. And then when we look on the bottom here, see, there's the three hoses. It's not a big deal. The only big deal right now is that we haven't drained the coolant yet and we haven't taken the bottom cover off. When are we going to take that bottom cover off? I think we got to do it now. We got to do it now. As a side note, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, I'm kind of crazy about my tools. Not like that, but you know, when I start having like tools all over the place, um, I I can't remember where I put them. So you know what I do? I just take all the tools and I put them back where they belong. Put them back. I drop one on the floor, so now I got to go back and look for it. Where'd I drop it? So the tools all go back where they came from. That way, I need a tool. I know where it is. So I'm not going to pop them back in exactly because it's not easy to get them back out, you know? I got my wobble there, extension. All right, that'll do it. And it cleaned up my work area now. See, we got no tools here now. Nothing to knock on the floor. Now we can take the the bottom. Okay, the bottom cover. We're gonna we're gonna attack it with a screwdriver. So here's the screwdriver. We're gonna attack it. So we got our light under there and. Uh, Looks decent. And I got I got my uh, my car up on some logs. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, we're gonna start pulling that cover off. All right. Looks like the dealer took the little service hatch off. That's kind of cool. Smart guys, those dealer guys are. So these little poppers here, they just pop them off. You got to be careful not to pop all of them because they don't all come out. Uh, not sure about this one, so you know what? I'm gonna pop it. Not sure about it. And then uh, there's a bunch of bolts too, like along the front here, that we're gonna have to pull. Like this one here, you got to pull that bolt. So just go around, pop all these poppers, pull them out, and see where you are. And then uh, I'll get back. All right, so we broke the. Uh, Broke the bolts free. Now we're gonna zip them out of here. Normally I just drop them on the floor and then clean. Clean it up later. So there you go. whole thing comes out, throw it on the floor over there. All right, when the cover's off, that's what you get. You're looking at the engine and the transmission and some other stuff. It's no picnic getting this far, but uh, it's going to It's uh, nuts and bolts and crap that you pick up from the lower cover. You know where that goes. It goes in a drawer. And then, I told you I had a pile of crap in the back. There it is, you got the intake, you got the cowl, you got the lower cover, okay. Just 
So now we're uh, we're about to have a lot of fun with this. Some of the most fun that we're going to have with this whole project, we're going to have to disconnect the coolant lines. And that's a mess because it goes everywhere. This is the PCV, positive crankcase ventilator. That's the, the device and this is the hose, so just disconnect that. Okay, to remove these two coolant lines here, take your old needle nose vice grips and then uh, you know, just clamp that prick, slide it over, and then let it go. All right. Same with this one here. See that? Clamp it. Slide it up. Just take your time with this crap, okay? There we go. Now we can pull the lines. Okay, so we grab it with the pliers. Give it a little twist. Give it a little twist. And there you go. There shouldn't be any coolant in here because I already opened the pet cock. You can hear it running. You hear that? That's because I let I let air in there. And then we got this one here. Remember, we're gonna reuse this this intake in the throttle body. And some of these coolant lines we're gonna reuse, so be polite, be nice. There you go.